let's talk about tops. What's their deal? What's their sitch? Are they, to use the parlance of our times, valid? Let's watch this educational video to learn more. The domestic top, also known as grumpus maxillid, is any consenting adult human with a sexual orientation that gravitates towards the dominant role in paraphilic or preferential dynamics. Tops most often manifest in symbiont circles with domestic bottoms, also known as bratelli red bottome, and domestic switches, also known as flip flopone switcheroony. <laughs> the top genus contains a number of different species, including rope tops, BDSM tops, tickle tops, and more. But the specific focus of my academic research is one of the more widely misunderstood species of top, the rare and mysterious Spanko top. Spanko tops can be identified by the following traits, a grumpy face, a grumpy personality, and a general disinterest in having fun or being hilarious. That was just a joke, tops are great. Love you, lids. But the one characteristic that most prominently sets Spanko tops apart from the related Spanko bottom and Spanko switch subspecies is receiving spankings is not part of their recorded behavioral pattern. These results have been replicated both in captivity and in the wild and peer reviewed for evidence of bias. In some cases, both tops and bottoms have been known to undergo a natural selection process of adaptation and evolution and become switches. And in those cases, their behaviors undergo a concurrent transformation. But for tops who remain in an original state as tops, the observed top behaviors I have described do not change. Well, I think that pretty much sums it up. Tops top, bottoms bottom, and switches alternate between the two roles. Easy. So today's video can be nice and short. We can all go home early. I see nothing controversial or debatable to discuss about this fairly cut and dried expression of sexual orientation. Any questions? Oh. Oh. Um, I... Guess we have some questions. <laughs>without them. We love to love them. We love to brat them. It's not their fault they're tops. They were just born that way. No one's perfect. In recent years, I have started to notice a slight linguistic shift in the way we talk about tops, and I don't like it. And I know from the Spanko Whisper network that is my email inbox that a lot of Spanko tops out there don't like it either. And I'll just say it. I blame BDSM. In this video, I'm going to talk about the Spanko community and the BDSM community. And sometimes my phrasing will posit these two communities as distinct and at times even opposing cultures. So I want to define my terms as early as possible because some of this is going to get a bit tricky. First, to be clear, those of us in the spanking fetish community or Spankos are undoubtedly a branch of the larger BDSM tree. I am a BDSM practitioner. I explicitly said as much in one of my recent videos. So when I use the terms BDSM or Spanko to refer to these two communities, I don't mean to reduce the spectrum of paraphilic sexualities to a binary. It's really more like a tree. When I say BDSM, I'm talking about the entire tree with its huge spectrum of sexual identities, preferences, and expressions. But when I say Spanko, I'm just talking about our one specific branch, which is both attached to the tree and distinct. Got it? Got it. To put it another way, all Spankos practice BDSM, but not everyone who practices BDSM is a Spanko. Oh, I, I see we have more questions. So what's the difference between a kink and a paraphilia. A paraphilia is the experience of intense and persistent sexual arousal to atypical objects, situations, fantasies, or behaviors. My paraphilia, spanking, occupies the place in my life that sex occupies in the lives of sex-oriented people, and I regard it as my sexual orientation innate, unchosen, and lifelong. Those words are important, so put a pin in those. If you've been watching this channel for a while, you probably already know that, in my opinion, the word kink 
has been culturally reduced to something almost meaningless. So let me try to give it some meaning for the purposes of our conversation here today. I do think kinks can be innate, unchosen, and lifelong, but unlike paraphilias, I don't think they have to be. I think kinks can also be learned behaviors, choices, temporary phases, or preferences that are fun, but by no means mandatory. This is an important distinction, and I think people don't give it the seriousness and respect it deserves. So I wanna drive the point home. Think of it this way. There are lesbians, and there is Katy Perry. See my point? There might be some similar behavioral expressions, but the identities behind those two behaviors are very different. Got it? Got it. So what exactly am I whining about today? What am I blaming the BDSM tree for doing to Spanko Tops? As I said, over the last few years, I have noticed a linguistic shift. More and more, I hear Spankos saying things like, I won't use any implement on a bottom that I haven't felt myself. Or, I just don't trust any tops who haven't at least tried bottoming. It's just good to have that experience, you know? And I hate that I hate it. It's dangerous and does not accurately reflect the immutability of sexual orientation. In fact, I think it borders on, and please keep your hands and arms inside the train car because this phrase is about to cross the third rail of pervert communities. It borders on a consent violation. When topping is primarily a kink, that is, a preference, choice, or phase, then yeah, a top can absolutely make whatever additional choices he, she, or they wants to make, including the choice to try bottoming. But when topping is an expression of immutable sexual orientation, then asking a top to just try bottoming is not dissimilar to asking a lesbian to just try a dude. Without, of course, the same significant cultural, social, and political pressure that lesbians have historically and in some cultures presently faced to subvert their sexual identities for disclaimer, 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 disclaimer. Please disclaimer, don't disclaimer. cancel me. <laughs> is it even possible to cancel someone who isn't on Twitter anymore? My theory is this. On some branches of the BDSM tree that are more focused on chosen experiences rather than identity, this I will only top with implements that I have experienced as a bottom thing became very trendy, very cool, very woke, very not like a regular top, I'm a cool top. <laughs> right, Regina? Please stop talking. And somehow that rhetoric leaked into our community where for most of us, this was never a choice. Pressuring tops who don't want to bottom to just try bottoming is exactly the same as pressuring anyone else who doesn't want to bottom to just try bottoming. Being hit on a sexual body part when you don't want to be is Terrible. And if you're a Spanko top who doesn't want to experience that, you are not a jerk. You are not a hypocrite. And you're not less good at topping. In fact, I think that stance makes you more safe and trustworthy. And here's why. First, I really dig your stance on enthusiastic consent. I like and trust it when tops treat themselves with the same kind of respect that I expect and demand. Tops who don't want to get hit are just showing the same grace to themselves that they show to bottom. They don't ask anyone to get hit who doesn't really, really want it. But I would actually go even farther than that. This thing about needing to feel implements before you use them, it's not just disrespectful to identity tops. It's dangerous to bottoms like me. I know that for some people, these smug declarations of switchy experience feel good. These people get to feel superior for having that experience and they get to feel like they're better than other tops who haven't had the same experience. But that's just it. This rhetoric centers their feelings. Every single human has a unique pain tolerance, play style, and reaction to implements. Just because you've had the experience of being spanked with a hairbrush, that gives you absolutely no useful information about what the experience of being spanked with a hairbrush feels like for me. You might think that straps are mild, but I might think they're agonizing. The only way to know for sure what an implement feels like to the person you're topping is to talk to that person. As my friend Emma, the good one, put it. The personal experience of bottoming cannot take the place of extensive discussion and negotiation and experimentation about what the bottom wants. If you know what an implement felt like to you, that's one thing, but it could feel entirely different to the person you're topping. Yeah. That's exactly right. Nothing, and particularly not, 
a friggin' borderline consent violation, can take the place of clear and direct communication with your play partner. If you're a top who wants to experience bottoming, if that is a choice you want to make, that is great, go for it. But don't congratulate yourself for making that choice or pressure other tops who might not have the same identity as you to make the same choice. And please remember, child battery is pervasive and unquestioned in many parts of the world, and it's entirely possible that that top you're belittling for not wanting to just try a few swats of a paddle might very well have been abused as a kid and might know exactly what a paddle feels like. We don't pressure people to do sexual stuff they don't want to do, including tops. And it stresses me out to see hints of this rhetoric slipping into our community. This is a call out video. Cut it out. Got it? Got it.